Hello, this is the Ben Crazy, and this video is an update to my first video that I made about four years ago in 2015. Since then, a lot has changed, including new downloads, game settings, and control panel settings to make this aging game look as good as it can. As always, the links that I go to in this tutorial are in the description below, and if you like this video, click on the subscribe button to see future videos. So let's get started. First, let's download and install the files we need. The first website we need to go to is the revamped Reloaded. Click on the 2010-2011 updated Hi-Res Shared Combo Pack and it will start downloading. This will update the shared folder to increase the resolution of textures and it has some files you will need if you ever want to download track mods in the future. The next website linked below is for new sky textures. If you highlight the download button, there is an option for 4K, HD, and standard def. If you have a powerful PC, choose the 4K option, but if you have a slower computer, select HD instead. On the next website, which is the same website we used for the NASCAR Racing 2003 install video, if we scroll down a bit further to 3DO files and MIPS, you will see monster energy files we will use to upgrade the original files. We want to download the NASCAR Flagger, the Jumbotron, the Hauler, the LED Truck, Tire Walls, and the Grass. The next website is NT Core, and we want to download the 4GB patch. What this patcher does is allows NASCAR Racing 2003 to use 4 gigabytes of virtual memory instead of the 2 gigabytes the game originally allowed. This will reduce stuttering and make the game run smoother with downloaded mods. On the second to last website, we want to download the latest D3D8 to 9 patch, which for me is version 1.9.2. This will be used to run the game in DirectX 9 as opposed to 8 because it runs the game more efficiently. And for the last website we need to go to, click on the download button for Reshade. This program allows us to use the D3 D8 to 9 patch we downloaded earlier and it has some extra features you can play around with to make the game look better. So now that we have everything downloaded, Go to the folder you downloaded the files in, and we first want to unzip the files. Highlight all the files and right click and select 7-zip or whatever unzipping program you have, and then extract the files to their own folder. Once we did that, go ahead and delete the zipped files. We are first going to install the texture files, so go ahead and open the NASCAR Racing 2003 folder and go into the Tracks folder. We are first going to install the 2010-2011 updates folder, so open it up and we're going to drag and drop the new shared folder into the tracks folder. When it asks to overwrite, select replace the file. Go back and we can now delete that folder and we are going to do the same for the next file, only we are going to put them in the shared folder. Double click the flagger folder and drag and drop the MIP file into the shared folder. Double click the grass folder and drag and drop all except for the readme file into the shared folder. Open the LED truck folder and drag and drop the MIP files into the shared folder. Open the hauler folder and there are two options. Select 1024 if you have a slower computer or select 2048 if you have a powerful one and drag and drop the files into the shared. Open the sky folder and drag and drop all the files into the shared folder. And lastly, the tire walls, drag and drop all except for the readme into the shared folder. Now go back to the main NASCAR Racing 2003 season folder and drag and drop the d3d8.dll file into the folder along with Reshade. For the four gigabyte patch, open the folder and double click on the application to run it. Navigate to the NASCAR Racing folder and select the NASCAR Racing 2003.exe. Click and open it and it will say that it was successful and hit OK. Now if you look into your folder, you will see a new exe file and a file that has been renamed backup, which is the original file if you ever need it in the future. 
go into the NASCAR Racing 2003 folder and open up Reshade. Click on Select Game to install and select the NASCAR Racing 2003 EXE. Then click on DirectX 9. It will ask if you want to download a collection and select Yes. Here, you can select more effects to put on NASCAR Racing 2003. It's trial and error, so test if you want to use any of them, but for me, I'm going to select Uncheck All and click on OK. So now that we have everything installed, let's open up NASCAR Racing 2003 and correct the in-game settings. Go to Options and try to match everything here to what you see in your game. Some things are based on your personal preferences like windshield buildup, solar effects, and steering wheel, but for the other options, match to what you see. Click on Done and exit the game. Now, go back to your NASCAR Racing 2003 folder and find a file named core.ini. Scroll down a bit and look for the cache size. Add a 1 to the beginning of the value. Then if you scroll down a bit more, under Memory, make sure that the max block size and the pool size is 524288. Save the file and close. The next file we are going to look for is the ren.dxg file. For the anisotropic level, change that value to 0, and for the texture set size, change that to negative 1. Save and close. In the future, if you ever see the game redoing the configuration, if you open up a new mod or sometimes the game just does it randomly, it only messes with this file. So if that ever happens, go back and redo these settings back to what I showed you. The last file we need to modify is located in your player folder, then your player name, and then open the player file. Under Graphics Options, make sure that both Draw Ahead and Behind Distance are 100, Car Mega Shader and Shadow Volumes are set to 1, and a bit further down, change the Texture Quality to 100. Save and close the file. Now to show you what these changes did, so far we made the game look from this to this, but we can still improve the game a bit further. The last thing that we need to do is change the options inside of your GPU's control panel. Now I'm using an NVIDIA GPU, so if you have an AMD card, the settings may not be the same, but some will be similar, so try to follow as much as you can. Right click on the desktop and select the control panel. Select Manage 3D Settings and then click on the Program Setting tab. If we stayed on the Global tab, it would have changed the settings for all of your games you use, which would not be a great idea. Click on the drop down and select NASCAR Racing 2003, or if it doesn't show up, click on Add and find the NASCAR Racing 2003.exe. After doing that, these are the settings you want to use. For anisotropic filtering, we want to make that 16 times. For anti aliasing FXAA, we want that on. For the anti-aliasing gamma correction, we want that off. For anti-aliasing mode, we want to set it to override any application setting. For anti-aliasing settings, we want to make that 8 times. For anti-aliasing transparency, we also want to set that to 8 times. For CUDA GPUs, set that to the use the global settings, which should be all. For a low latency mode, that should be off. For monitor technology, this depends on if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor or not. Some computers will not show this option, so it's okay if you don't have it. Just use the global setting, which is G-Sync compatible or whatever you have it set to. For multi-frame sampling AA, we want to select that to be on. For OpenGL, we want that to be auto-select. For power management mode, we want that to be optimal. For refresh rate, this is another one that you might not see if you have a G-Sync monitor or not. Um, you just want to use the global setting, which is highest available. For shader cache, you want that to be on. 
For texture filtering and isotropic sample option, we want that to be off. For texture filtering, negative LOD bias, set that to clamp. For texture filtering quality, set that to high quality. For trilinear optimization, we want to set that to off. For threaded optimization, we want to have that to auto. For triple buffering, we want that to be off. And for V-Sync, we want to turn that off. And lastly, for virtual reality pre-rendered frames, this is for only those that use uh, virtual reality headsets or VR headsets, um, use the global setting, which should be set to one. Click on apply, and now we are done. So lastly, just to compare on how much better the game will look now, this is before any change. This is after we made the change to the game files. And lastly, this is what the game looks like with the control panel changes. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions on the settings I went over, put it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos in the future. And again, I am the Ben Crazy, and I will see you later.